OK, here's another one that uh, President Biden perhaps will enjoy reading when he's on his holiday in St. Croix. It's from another conservative columnist, Jonah Goldberg, who has a new piece in the Los Angeles Times titled Closing Out 2022, Trump has supplanted Nixon as the saddest figure in post-presidential politics. He writes in part, quote, the contrast with Nixon's post-presidency is poignant. Nixon, in exile, wrote 10 books, all quite serious, including his memoirs. He clawed back a reputation as a wise man who dispensed advice to president. But that's not the poignant part. Nixon was surrounded with a loving family, lifelong friends and loyal aides who gave him the sort of sucker that politics couldn't. Nixon, in exile, still enjoyed the respect not just of his friends, but of his, en of his enemies. Nixon's struggle was complicated because he was complicated. Trump's struggle is simple because he is simple. All he, all he is is appetite for fame, power, sex, admiration. Shorn of any interior life and unencumbered by exterior attachments, we don't need secret tapes to know Trump because the real Trump is always on display for those with eyes to see him. And finally, the sight is becoming wearying, even for his fans. Ouch! Up there with that New York Magazine piece, John Heileman, in terms of really going for Trump in a way that is sort of personal but also very accurate, painting this very lonely, sad figure down in Mar-a-Lago whose world has just shrunk. Yeah, and I, look, I mean, Jonah Goldberg, Jonah Goldberg uh, coming at it from a, from a more from a position of opinion than than, than reporting uh, from the Olivia Nuzzi piece in New York Magazine. But they both, you know, the, Olivia, the, the Olivia's piece paints a picture, and Jonah kind of makes the uh, the, the point of uh, the historical point relative to to Nixon and Peter Baker, I you know as someone who just uh, along with your 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 wife wrote a, a very important book about Trump's four years uh, in the White House uh, that just came out last year. Who I advise everybody who wants to get a full uh, full 360 view of, of Trump's time in office, you go buy uh, Peter's book. It's uh, it is an interesting comparison to the one with Nixon, right? There was a period where Nixon was pathetic, as as Jonah says in that column, and then eventually over over time, Nixon kind of rehabilitated himself as and made himself into a foreign policy Mandarin, someone who, you know, Bill Clinton could eulogize when he died and, and speak of his foreign policy achievements and the opening to China and other things. You know, the, the, the thing with Trump is that he's as pathetic right now as Nixon was at his most pathetic, isolated, sort of sad. He doesn't have his own B.B. Rebozo, but but it's probably looking for one. But there's no real prospect on the horizon that Trump can write a big book of foreign policy uh, on foreign policy like Nixon did and find his way back into the establishment's good stead. Uh, it, it, it kind of for, for, it's foreboding or foretells an even darker future in a lot of ways for Trump than the one that faced Nixon post, post uh, resignation. Yeah, no, I think that's exactly right. Nixon obviously had his pathologies, and we shouldn't forget uh, some of the venal, many, uh, very sometimes racist, anti-Semitic things he said and did. I went back and read a lot of the Watergate books this summer because of the 50th anniversary, and you're reminded how expansive and extensive, uh, you know, the, the misconduct really was. But there was always a serious side to Nixon, things he really cared about. He was a real, he was a patriot in the most uh, genuine sense of the word. He cared about, uh, you know, policy things. Not only did he have the opening China, a detente with the Soviet Union, ended the, you know, the, the Vietnam Peace Agreement uh, at home, obviously presided over the creation of the EPA and the uh, signing of the Clean Air Act, Clean Water Act. I mean, he, he was a, a serious student of policy, and he cared about ideas and, and, and where the country went. And, and his post-presidency was about rehabilitating himself, yes. It was about putting himself back in the good graces of history, if nothing else. But it was also, you know, it was, in fact, uh, you know, a period where he engaged in ideas and engaged in things that he thought the country should do. That's just not Trump. There's nothing about that with Trump. He's not sitting there uh, offering the country some grand thoughts about where we should go. He's simply uh, relitigating his 2020 election, relitigating January 6th. Uh, and, and attacking Joe Biden and the Democrats and Mitch McConnell and the establishment Republicans. It's all conflict for Trump. He has no interest in healing. He has only interest in Trump. And I think that that's the difference between uh, Nixon and Trump. And I think that Jonah Goldberg's column makes a very sharp uh, contrast there. Yeah, Richard Nixon may have written lengthy volumes on foreign policy. The book that's come out under Donald Trump's name, a picture book, uh, Brendan Buck, which I think uh, makes uh, sense. Um, so we have now a few portraits of, of, of Trump in the wilderness, Trump alone, uh, Trump sad figure. Um, but knowing Republicans the way you do, is he going to stay there or does he have a uh, course he could chart for a comeback? 
Yeah, I, I, I listen to this, and I, I have to just think, like, I don't think Donald Trump is going to go out with a whimper. He, he's not one to take all of this laying down. And, and certainly, he, he started a campaign far earlier than a, a traditional candidate would. I, obviously, there's suspicion that that's to stave off in, investigations or whatever it will be. At some point, Donald Trump is going to turn this back on and, and get back in our faces. And that's the real question. Obviously, no one has jumped in to actually challenge him yet. We talk about how Ron DeSantis is now in the lead, and, and I do think that's very real. I think there are a lot of people who are, are tiring of this act. But we've seen it before. He has taken on a lot of Republicans, and he has always won. And at some point, he's going to come out swinging, and the, and the question will be whether voters find that interesting again. Um, there, there's a real chance that they just do th see it as sad. I mean, the most recent thing, putting out NFTs, was probably the most pathetic thing I, I've seen in a really long time. And it used to be the kind of thing that we would kind of light our hair on fire about, but we just kind of shrugged at it because it's old and tiring and sad. But there are so many people who still like him. And when he turns turns on what they liked about him, that bravado, that at least he fights mindset, uh, I think that could ultimately uh, you know, reinvigorate him a little bit. And, and I think it's way too early to say that he's done. For the record, the Trump astronaut NFT remains my favorite. Brandon Buck and Peter Baker, thank you both for joining us this morning. And still